I want to save you some money on your power bill. Dang, wrong teeth. I want to save you some money on your power bill. That's better. Okay, so obviously I'm having a little fun here. Uh, it is Halloween after all. Um, but I want to talk about something that can be kind of scary. See what I did there? Um, and that is your power bill. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about uh, parasitic or vampire power draw. And um, according to the Berkeley National Laboratory, about 5 to 10% of the average person's power bill is uh, consumed by appliances and electronics around your house that you don't actually use. They're idle. Um, and you think they're not drawing any power, but they actually are. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go around my house using these two tools and I'm going to find out how much power is being wasted around my house with these appliances and these electronics that I'm not using. So before we get started, as always, if you like the video, please like it. Please subscribe if you like my content. Hit the bell button or the subscribe button. And most importantly, as always, if somebody you know or love could use this information, please share the video with them. So the first step in trying to eliminate some of these vampire power draws is to get yourself a piece of test equipment. Now these are anywhere from $15 to $30, and they are watt meters. And they're very simple to operate. You plug this end into the outlet in your house, and then you plug your appliance into the front, and there's a couple buttons to push to show you uh, how long it's been and how many watts it's used. Uh, very simple, and I'm gonna give you a demo of that in a minute. The other part of the first step is to go around your house and identify what pieces of equipment and appliances you want to use this on. Now, to give you some examples from around my house, I just did this. I found that if you leave your laptop plugged in, even if it's not on, it's going to use some power. Um, uh, same goes for desktop computers. Uh, the, one of the biggest culprits around my house are video game consoles. They are unbelievable power suckers. Even if you have them turned off and you think they're not drawing any power, they draw like 50 to 75 watts, so it's big. Um, Wi-Fi printers. I print maybe once a week at my house and that thing's on all the time. Um, coffee makers, uh, electric toothbrushes that you leave on the charger, uh, electric razors or shavers that you leave on the charger. And believe it or not, in the spare bedroom, I realized that we have a AM FM clock radio that we leave on all the time, even though nobody's in there. And we have a VCR. Yeah, I said VCR. We have old tapes that we have stored away that we still like to watch occasionally, um, maybe once every five years, but occasionally, right? So this thing's plugged in, it's got the little clock flashing on it and stuff. Um, and then we have a DVD player that we never use either. Uh, that's in the family room and that's plugged in. So I found a lot of these little appliances around my house um, and it really shocked me how much power was actually being consumed by these things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually take these around so you get an idea of how easy these are to use and you can see some of the power that's being uh, drawn all the time. So let's get techie. Okay, so as you can see, I have the Xbox on. We have Forza Horizon on here. Let me go ahead and mute it now. And over here we have the Surelec watt meter plugged in. So normally I would have, this is the Xbox power cord. Normally I would have that plugged directly into the power strip along with my TV and Alexa, and I can just shut it off when I'm not home uh, for the day or whatever to save myself some electricity. But I have everything powered on now, and using these watt meters is as easy as unplugging your appliance from the power strip or the receptacle, plugging this directly into the receptacle, and then plugging your power cord from your appliance into the watt meter. It's really that simple. You just put it right in line with it. And as you can see right now with the Xbox uh, in gaming mode, we're pulling 146.6 watts. So as you can see, I've turned my Xbox off now, and um, we still have the Sralic watt meter plugged in. It's been going for 15 minutes, but some of that was actually power drawn when we had the Xbox on and we were playing games. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. And we are going to let this go. Well, hold on, let the light go out real quick. So as you can see, it's pulling if you watch it, it's pulling anywhere from 30 to 50 watts um, with the power off. So what I'll do is I'll set a timer on my phone. I'll come back in one hour to check on it, and we'll determine how many 
watt hours of energy the Xbox uses while it's off. So as you can see, I ended the test at one hour and one minute and we used 0 0.022 kilowatt hours of power. So we have our watt meter, we're hooking it up to all these small appliances. What exactly are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to convert the energy that we found that those appliances consume to a cost that you pay in dollars. So um, what we wanna do is go over the concept here first. We're gonna use an example of a 100 watt light bulb that we always leave on. And we're looking for the cost per month. And the reason I use cost per month is because that's how you generally get billed. So what we need to do is we need to take our 100 watts per hour, which is watts are a unit of energy. So we have 100 watts times 730 hours. And that's the average amount of hours in a month. So we have 100 watts times 730 hours. And then we divide it by 1,000 to get the unit of measurement that the electric company actually charges you for, which is a kilowatt hours per month. So we take 100 watts times 730 hours, and that gives us 73,000 watt hours per month. Then to get that into the kilowatt hours that were charged by the electric company, we divide by 1,000, and that gives us 73 kilowatt hours per month. So we take that 73 kilowatt hours, and we multiply it by your cost per kilowatt hour. The average in the U.S. is 18 cents, so that's what we're going to use for this demonstration, but yours will vary. So you insert your cost here, it'll be shown on your electric bill. So in this instance, we're gonna use the average. So 73 kilowatt hours times 18 cents is your total cost. And that's gonna be $13 and 14 cents in this case. So to run that 100 watt light bulb, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a month, it's gonna cost you about $13 and 14 cents. Now for our real life demo with the Xbox. So this is actually a little bit easier than our concepts because the watt meter, when you put it on, actually does some of the conversion for you. It gives you the value in kilowatt hours. So what you do is you put it on the device and you let it run for one hour. And in this case, we got 0 0.022 kilowatt hours measured over that one hour. So what we do is we take that 0 0.022 kilowatt hours, that's energy consumed for one hour, and we multiply by that 730, which is the hours per month. That gives us a value of 16.06 .06 kilowatt hours that that Xbox uses when plugged in but not powered on for the month. So what we do is we take that 16.06 .06 kilowatt hours and we multiply it by the rate that your electric company charges you. In this example, we're using the national average, which is 18 cents. When we do that, we get $2.89 per month, plus or minus. And I say so now that we know how to use the watt meter to take our measurements and we know how to perform the calculations to determine our costs, let me show you a few of the examples around my house that I measured over the week. So we have two Xboxes. Each Xbox costs me approximately $3.84 per month when it's plugged in and not in use. The Wii cost me about $1.18 per month. The Keurig coffee maker cost me about $0.42 cents per month. Each phone charger in the house costs me 26 cents per month. So if you have four or five people, that could go up to a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty, you know. And then each cable box costs me four dollars and fifty-nine cents per month when it's plugged in and not being used. You know, nobody's actively using it to watch TV. The printer costs me a dollar thirty-one per month. That old VCR costs me about ninety-two cents per month. The alarm clock costs me about sixty-six cents per month. And the laptop, if I leave it plugged in and on all the time, which I generally have been doing up until lately, costs me about $7.88 per month. If I just leave it plugged in, not powered on, it costs me about $3 per month because it's constantly checking the charge and charging it as necessary. So I throw a lot of numbers at you, I get it. But these are the examples around my house. So what's the next step? The second step in this process is to determine how you handle those appliances. Are you willing to eat the cost of, you know, 66 cents per month to keep that alarm clock on in your spare bedroom? Do you walk in there to do things every once in a while, store things or whatever, and you wanna look over at the time, or do you play the radio? That's fine. I don't, I'm gonna unplug it. So you can either unplug these items or you can put them on timers. So just by more closely managing 
my small electronics and appliances, I can save about $25 per month. So now that I've gone through my house, I'm confident you can do the same. It just takes a little bit of an investment. This particular watt meter is $15. This one's $30. They both do the same thing. Um, it takes a little bit of time to actually hook these up and uh, take the measurements. And then you need to do a little bit of math. Sorry, <laughs> nobody likes math. Well, I do, but not a lot of people like math. And then, you know, over the long run, hopefully you'll save yourself, you know, a pretty good chunk of change every month. And then you can use that for prepping items. So good luck to you. I hope you save some money and I'll see you next video. Thanks. Bye.